Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I wish we were in our sanctuary to sing our alleluias together, but wherever you are, we can be together in our joy that is Easter once again. I look forward to this day every year, but this year it is truly special. We need Easter now more than ever. And I think you will see that the timeless eternal message of Easter will not disappoint. As you can see, I'm not in our sanctuary. I'm outside in our columbarium garden. You may be thinking, what a strange place to be on Easter. Why be in a place that remembers the dead on the day of resurrection and new life? Well, I think this is the perfect place to be for many reasons. First of all, because it is beautiful. The Columbarium has always been a beautiful, peaceful resting place for the saints of our church. But since we made some improvements last year, it is even more accessible and lovely. Daffodils are coming up and trees are budding and there are signs of spring everywhere. Another reason why I wanted to be in the garden this morning is because that is where Mary Magdalene encountered the risen Christ in the Gospel of John. In fact, she mistook Jesus for the gardener as she stood weeping outside the garden tomb. While there is no weeping today, there's only joy. There's been enough sadness and worry for a lifetime over the last few weeks. It is time to look into that empty tomb and realize that life and hope and joy are ours this day because Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In a moment, I'll take you back to that garden as we walk through the story from John's Gospel one more time. But first, Terry Flanagan will introduce to you the music to begin our worship time together this Easter morning. Happy Easter. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. For our musical offerings today, I'm going to play for you many of your favorite Easter hymns. And following this, a quartet of voices is going to lead in our very famous Easter hymn, Jesus Christ has Risen Today. I'm going to invite you this morning to sing along with that hymn. I'm thankful for Joanna Mangiardo, who is with us this morning. She's going to sing, I Know That My Redeemer Liveth from Handel's Messiah. To close out the morning, I'm going to play from Vidor's Fifth Symphony, his famous Toccata. Again, Happy Easter.
What would Easter be without the great hymns of the faith? And what would Easter be without children? This is the point in our Easter service where I'd invite the children to come forward and spend a few moments in, with them to celebrate the joy of this day. Well, even though we can't be together in person, we still wanted to have something special for the kids on this Easter virtual church video. So Elizabeth and I have a song we want to teach the children and children of all ages can sing along. Happy Easter! So we made these great maracas and we're going to use them the second time around on this song. So we'll teach it to you right now and then we'll sit, we'll switch parts on the second time around. It's hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise, Praise ye the Lord. Lord. Okay, and I'm going to start the hallelujahs. Mm. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Happy Easter. Wouldn't be Easter without music. It wouldn't be Easter without children. And it wouldn't be Easter without telling the gospel story once again. The story of the empty tomb. The story of new life emerging victorious over death. The story of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Each of the four Gospels tells this story in a unique way. My favorite among the four is the way John tells it in the fourth Gospel. It's so personal. You can almost smell the flowers and feel the dew on the grass as Mary comes to the garden early on that first Easter morning. I don't plan to read the whole story to you today. You can do that on your own, from your own Bible, or from a link that we sent on our constant contact email that went out this morning. The story is found in John chapter 20. But before we get into the story, let's join our hearts together in prayer. And I'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. And you can join in that prayer wherever you are. It's one more way we can be together in spirit, even when we are apart. Let us pray. God of new life, we come to you this new day thankful for the gift of life itself and its renewal that we experience each Easter morning. There is much going on in our world that is bringing despair and fear. We have come through a season of Lent unlike any other. As the journey got harder each week, we felt you walking alongside us. We ask that you would continue to walk alongside all those who are sick, alone, grieving, or uncertain of the future. We may not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Easter is proof that you have a future for us that is full of faith, hope, and love. Help us now to hear the greatest story ever told in a new and fresh way. May it speak to each person in their particular place of need. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it was early in the morning on that first day of the week that Mary Magdalene came to the garden tomb. It doesn't say why she came, but it is something people like to do. They feel close to a loved one who has passed away by visiting their grave. Perhaps she was bringing flowers as 
many family members bring to honor their loved ones here in our columbarium. But what strikes me most about this part of the story is that John tells us she came early in the morning while it was still dark. She came looking for Jesus while it was still dark. We might skip over that detail until we remember the way the gospel began. In John chapter 1, there is that eloquent philosophical poem about the light coming into the world, and the darkness tried, but it could not put it out. John writes, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Spoiler alert, John told us how the story was going to end right there in the first chapter. But here in the opening scene of the Easter story, he reminds us it was still dark. It looked like darkness had won. When you watch the news or read the news feed on your phone, you might feel like darkness is winning right now. Each week has had new images of death and darkness to absorb in this pandemic crisis. Pictures of bodies stored in refrigerator trucks and being buried in mass graves on Hart Island were almost too much to bear. And it is more than people that are dying in this darkness. People's hopes and dreams are dying as jobs are lost and businesses are forced to close. You and I, like Mary, have come looking for hope while it was still dark. Easter has come with hope and joy just in time. The light of Easter will banish that darkness once again. The stories of compassion and kindness in the midst of this crisis have pierced that darkness a little bit already. But Easter and the empty tomb will finish the job. The first thing Mary saw surprised her. She fully expected the darkness to prevail, but she saw something that gave her hope. She didn't know what it meant, but the stone was rolled away. She ran and told the others, and Peter and the beloved disciple raced back to see what she was talking about. They came and looked in the tomb and saw that it was empty. They walked home daring to believe that maybe, just maybe, Jesus was alive. They were hesitant to get too excited because they had been in the pit of despair and grief and they couldn't bear to have their hopes dashed again. And yet they believed. There was hope. Once again, John gives us a detail that would be easy to ignore. He never names the beloved disciple. Tradition tells us that was John himself, but why no name? I like to think he didn't give the beloved disciple a name because he wants you and me to think of ourselves as the beloved disciple. We are the one Jesus loved. We are the ones who have come looking for him. We are the ones who dare to believe even though there are many reasons not to. On this Easter, may it give you hope to realize that you are the beloved disciple. Like that first beloved disciple, you have come to see the empty tomb once again, and you will not be disappointed. Once the other disciples go home, Mary is left in the garden by herself. She was weeping now. She was confused. She thought maybe someone had stolen the body, and she wanted it back. Her Lord deserved a proper burial. Just then she noticed someone coming near her. She didn't look closely. She thought it was the gardener, so she asked him if he knew where they had taken the body. Then it happened. When she least expected it, she heard him say her name, Mary. We love to hear our own name, don't we? Scientists have studied the brain and they say it lights up when we hear our name. Even people in a coma or a persistent vegetative state sometimes show some brain response when they hear their name. It means you are alive. It means you exist. You matter when you hear your own name, especially when it is spoken by someone you love and someone who loves you. Like Mary, we have come looking for the risen Christ, and like Mary, we can hear him say our name. He is here for each one of us. He wants every beloved disciple to know that you matter, 
that you are alive and that you have hope and joy and purpose, that you are loved. Once Mary heard her name, she must have stepped forward to hug Jesus because he said, don't touch me. Well, that seems odd, doesn't it? We're used to keeping our distance these days, but why did Jesus say that? It sounds almost cruel. Scholars have debated for centuries what he meant by that. I like to think he was just reminding her that she didn't get to keep him for herself. He was there for her in her moment of need, but he needed to go to others and bring light into their darkness as well. So she could not hold on to him. And that is the message of Easter, isn't it? There is light for you and me in our darkness, but light is meant to be shared. Like passing the candlelight on Christmas Eve, we need to take the light of Easter out into this dark world. Let's tell the world that each human being matters to God. Every life is precious and beloved. Everyone, everyone needs hope that death and darkness are not going to win. Everyone needs to hear that the tomb is empty. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I close with the words of a prayer that would best be sung. It was made famous by Canadian Celine Dion and Italian Andrea Bocelli. It's a beautiful, emotional song that has been sung by countless artists, usually in duet. But these days of finding hope and encouragement on the internet, there's a father and daughter duo whose homemade YouTube version has been viewed almost five million times. And by the way, I put a link to that video on the Constant Contact email. And watch your YouTube today because I read that Andrea Bocelli was going to sing it in an empty Milan cathedral on Easter Sunday. So as I watched and listened to Matt and Savannah, father and daughter, sing the prayer, I heard the words in a new way and I realized that was my prayer for us all this particular Easter Sunday. I won't sing it for you, but you will probably be hearing the beautiful melody in your mind as I share these words. So join me in this prayer to the risen Christ, the light that can overcome even the deepest darkness. I pray you'll be our eyes and watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer when we lose our way. Lead us to a place, guide us with your grace to a place where we'll be safe. I pray we'll find your light and hold it in our hearts. When the stars go out each night, remind us where you are. Let this be our prayer when shadows fill our day. Lead us to a place, guide us with your grace to a place where we'll be safe. A world where pain and sorrow will be ended and every heart that's broken will be mended and we'll remember we are all God's children reaching out to touch you, reaching out to the sky. We ask that life be kind and watch us from above. We hope each soul will find another soul to love. Let this be our prayer. Just like every child needs to find a place, guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be safe. Amen. May the grace and peace of the risen Christ fill your heart this day, and may the light of Easter shine forth from you to all those around you. Together, we can overcome the darkness. God bless and happy Easter, and there is more beautiful music to come.
Thank you.